Wearing silk is the ultimate in luxury, right? The beautiful colors, patterns, it's just gorgeous. The only problem with it is that it's expensive. So what are you gonna do? Well, I've got you. I am gonna show you three different methods that you can get a silk top on a budget. And number three is gonna really surprise you. And if you stick around till the end, I will also show you a couple of hacks that you can use on any outfit that you own to adjust the way that it fits. So, Let's do this. I love silk clothing. Just the feel of it against your skin is just like a gentle caress. It's so soft and smooth and silky. I also love the beautiful dyes you can get, the colors, the patterns. It's just gorgeous. As an autistic person, I actually seek out silk because of the way that it feels against my skin. Plus, it's low allergenic and is great for all seasons, keeping you warm in winter and cool in summer. So really, what is not to like? Well, there is one thing that I don't like, and that is the cost. Silk is very expensive, and when you're on a budget, what are you gonna do? Well, get inventive. So a quick internet shopping browse will show you that silk is indeed expensive. My favorite silk site, which has some gorgeous clothing, has silk tops for around $350 for the really nice ones. And they're mostly in plain colors. There's not really any prints that you can choose from. I would absolutely love to shop up a storm on that website, but my credit card would hate me. So I've come up with a solution. I'm gonna show you three ways that you can get a silk top and you might already have the items in your home. Plus, you don't need to be a great sewer. In fact, I can't sew at all. First, let's talk a little bit about silk. Silk has a long history dating back to ancient times. Legend has it that Chinese Empress Li Zixing discovered silk about 2700 BCE when a cocoon from a silkworm fell into her tea. It's a good thing she didn't drink it. But since then, silk has enjoyed an evolution which has turned it into a thriving industry these days. Silk is primarily produced by the silkworm Bombyx mori, or the larvae of that silkworm. They produce long silk threads to make their cocoons, which is quite remarkable considering they're about a kilometer long each. Silk is then produced by unraveling these threads and weaving them into this luxurious fabric. This is a very expensive process. So no wonder silk is associated with opulence and wealth. It has long adorned royal families. When you buy silk, it's important to know that there are different grades and qualities. Mulberry silk is the most sought after due to its quality. Silk is actually graded in units of mom, which is a Japanese unit of weight. The mom is used to express the density of the silk fabric. So something that is 19 mom is a very lightweight silk, which may be used in silk scarves, maybe pillowcases. Then it goes up from there. So the higher the mom, the more expensive the, the fabric and also the denser and more luxurious it feels. So after 19, you usually get say 22, then 25, then 30 for the most luxurious silks and the price increases accordingly. So now that you understand a little bit more about silk, let's dive into getting you adorned in it. Method number one. This is actually the first method I thought of. I was going through my collection of silk scarves and just admiring the beautiful colors and patterns that there were and thinking, how could I wear them so that you could see more of the pattern? Drape it around my shoulders, hang it down the front, or maybe wear it as a top. And that's where the idea came from. So for this method, you're going to need two square silk scarves. They can be identical silk scarves or you can have two different silk scarves, maybe one with a print, maybe one that's plain. It's entirely up to you. Get creative. So in this example, I've used two identical silk scarves with an adorable bunny print. They are both about 45 by 45 centimeters each, which is pretty good for a, say a size eight to a size 12 top. If you need a bigger top than this, then you'll just need to get some larger scarves. 
I've put a link in the description for some suitable scarves so you can check that out. So just some tips and things to watch out for when you're buying silk. Make sure that what you're buying is actually silk and not just polyester silk feeling. The sellers that sell the silk that I've linked to in the description actually guarantee that it's silk and will give you the relevant tests to prove that. Also if it's got the print on just one side that's okay in this scenario because only the good side is going to be visible in this top. But you might want to look out for the various moms that you can get. We just talked about that. You can get some really lightweight ones which is fine but you may want to go for a higher mom and remember to buy two scarves. You need to get two. But there are so many colors and patterns to choose from. Really, I think that is the hardest part. But once you've decided on the scarves that you want, then the next part is relatively easy. We'll just be sewing them together in four small straight sections. Now, I did mention before that I can't sew, and that's true. I did learn to sew when I was young, but I really found it difficult to sit still for a long time in front of a sewing machine. I'm pretty hyperactive so you can imagine that that did not go well. But I do know a lady here, a local lady, her name is Lynn and she is just fantastic at sewing. She's an older lady so she's been sewing for decades, she knows exactly what she's doing and over the years we've formed quite a good relationship. I bring her my alterations and my little sewing jobs and she does them in her home when she has time and I pay her cash. So I love supporting industries like that, people that have honed a craft over time and and I reward them with money because I can't do it myself. <laughs> but if you are clever and you can sew, then just something to bear in mind when you're sewing silk, apparently it is a little bit different and you'll need a finer needle and it's a very delicate fabric. So perhaps it might be a good idea to practice on some very sheer or fine uh, polyester fabric before you go ahead and do this on your beautiful silk scarves. So all that being said, here is the diagram that I've drawn to show you where you need to sew. Now you can take a screenshot of this or you can go to my blog at uh, itsmissrinney.com and you can just download the diagram from there. But basically you can see there are black and yellow sections and those are the sections where you need to sew. Now you can customize this for your own preference. I actually like to leave a little slit at the end of the sleeves and the torso just for a little bit of detail but you can sew all the way to the end if you want to. As well with the neck opening you can make that a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller depending on your preference. So you can customize it a little bit. So once you're finished you will have a very simple tunic style top which looks fantastic with a belt around it or tucked in or just worn out as is. I personally like to wear it with a belt um, and I like to wear it with jeans but it looks great in uh, you know tucked into a skirt or just hanging out over leggings whatever you feel like and I just absolutely love the bunny print and whenever I wear this I get lots of compliments. Method number two. So method number two is quite similar to method number one in that you'll be using a scarf again, only this time the scarf is going to be a very big scarf and a rectangular shape as well. So the scarf that I'm using for this is one that I've had for a while and I absolutely love it but I don't wear it because it is quite large and I find that if I wear it around my neck as a scarf it's just too big and bulky and I don't feel comfortable in it. So I was really looking for a way that I could make this scarf into a top. So with the rectangular scarf you're going to be folding it in half and cutting a neck hole basically. So for this method you will need a large scarf. The one that I've used is 120 by 60 centimeters which is quite large and you probably don't need one that big but I wanted as I said I wanted to use this because I just love it. So there are links again in the description for a suitable size scarf for this method. So here's the diagram for method two. As I said it's just simple sewing again. You will need to cut a hole for the neck and then just hem those edges where you cut the hole. Other than that it's pretty straightforward. You can see in the diagram that I've marked out the parts where you sew and again you can take a screenshot or go to my blog and download the diagram from there. So for me this made a large billowy top with a sort of 
bat wing sleeve happening. I do love the folds of fabric in this and I think it really adds to the luxurious look of the top along with the rich purple and blue shades. I've worn it with a chunky beaded necklace as well as a more delicate silver necklace but really I think that it looks best on its own as the print and colors are just so gorgeous. Method number three. Now method number three is a little bit strange. Well, you might think it's strange, but for this method, you are going to need a pillowcase. Yes, that's right, a pillowcase. I've been sleeping on silk pillowcases for a couple of decades now. I have naturally wavy hair and I find that if I sleep on a silk pillowcase, it does help reduce the tangling. I've also heard that it's good for your skin, although I can't really speak to that claim. Over time, I've accumulated quite a few silk pillowcases and often they're just singles. In other words, I don't have the matching pair for it. And I generally just use those for traveling. But I had this one particular pillowcase that I just loved the color of. So I'm using this one to make a top out of. You can use a standard pillowcase and that will make a top that will fit between a size 8 and a size 16 so because it's quite wide. But if you do want a larger top, then just get a queen sized pillowcase or a king sized pillowcase and that will give you a little bit more room. I recommend getting the envelope style pillowcase. There is also a style of pillowcase where it has a zip in the end of it and that's fine as well. It's just going to be a little bit more sewing for you. Make sure that when you're getting a silk pillowcase that it's a double sided silk pillowcase. Some of them only have silk on one side and then cotton or polyester on the back of it. So you want both sides being silk, that's really important. I've included links to silk pillowcases in the description as well and some of them even had some really cute prints on them. So just take a look, check it out and see what you like. So this method is slightly more complicated and does involve a little bit of seam unpicking. And if you've bought a silk pillowcase that has a zip on the side, then you'll have to remove that zip. Otherwise you can also cut off that side of the pillowcase and just hem it. But you will need to probably get a larger pillowcase to account for the room that you might lose in cutting off the zip. So here is the diagram for method number three. As you can see, there is a, a, a bit of unpicking and a bit of sewing. Take a screenshot of it, you, or you can go to the blog and download it, and it, it should be pretty easy to follow. If not, you can just send me a question in the comments or on Instagram in my DMs. So as you can see, this method makes a similar top to the other two in that it's a simple square style top, but this one is a little more cropped. And I really love this style. I think it looks beautiful with more fitted pants or a skirt and just hangs gorgeously, just, you know, as silk does. But with this particular style, I think it really works. And I like to dress this up with some jewelry. This is a plain colored pillowcase. So I think it looks nice with a, a necklace or some long earrings. But if you have a print, you might just want to wear it on its own. And I guarantee you, you will get compliments and not one person is going to know that you are wearing a pillowcase. So after trying these methods, did you save money? Well, yes, I think you would have. So let's break it down. Method number one is two silk scarves, which is around $100. Method number two is one large silk scarf, which is say around $60. Method number three is one standard pillowcase, which is around $50. Now let's add on the cost of sewing. I don't know how much sewing is in your local area, but I know for me that Lynn charges me $20 per job for this particular job because apparently it was quite quick and easy, didn't take her very long. So $20 was the going rate for each of these tops. If you add that on, then the average cost per top is around $90. So if you go to my favorite website, or if I go to my favorite silk website and look for a comparable top with a comparable amount of silk fabric in it you're looking at about $350 around there somewhere and it's all plain fabrics remember they don't really have prints in that price range yeah you're saving a fair bit of money it's better than a half price sale plus if you can sew and you didn't need to pay somebody to sew then you're saving even more money and if you already had these scarves in your home and you weren't using them, or maybe you went to a thrift shop and were able to find some in a thrift shop. And by the way, that 
purple and blue one in the second method is actually from a thrift shop, then you're saving even more. Happy days. So thanks for watching this this far. I did promise that I would show you a couple of styling hacks that you can use on these silk tops as well as any other top or dress or skirt that you have that you want to change the look. Maybe it doesn't fit properly. You just want to change what it looks like on your body. Then these are good hacks that you can use. The first one is the magnetic tip. So all you need for this is two strong magnets and what you're going to do is bunch a bit of material, excess material where you don't want it. In the example that I'm showing you I've got a big loose white t-shirt on and I'm just bunching the fabric up and then putting the magnet on one side of the fabric bunch and the other half of the magnet on the other side and that holds it. So the beauty of this method is that you're not damaging the fabric. So in the case of silk you don't want to be using safety pins or anything that may damage that delicate fabric. So I find magnets are great for uh, taking in you know the sides of the the top or the back. Actually my favorite way of using this method is with a maxi skirt. I really love to sort of you know take up the side of the skirt um, maybe have a little bustle at the back of fabric depending how full the skirt is. I find the magnet trick works really well for that and nobody can see it. Nobody would know you had magnets under your skirt. The second method is not, not a new method, I have seen this around, but it's using a bracelet. So you put the bracelet against the fabric and then you reach under the inside and grab the bracelet from the inside and then tie a hair tie around it. And this gives a really nice gathered effect to uh, the top or the dress or whatever you're using this method on. And once again, it doesn't damage the fabric. It actually is very gentle and you can just take it off when you take the top off and use it on a different top. So it's very versatile and yeah, just have fun and experiment and see how you can alter different clothing using these methods. So what did you think? Are you gonna give this a try? If you do, I would absolutely love to hear about it. So tell me what your favorite method is in the comments. And actually, I'd love to see a photo. So if you go to my Instagram, it's Miss Rinny, then uh, send me a photo in the DMs. I would love that as well. That would just make my day. And if you found this video of value or if you know somebody who would be really interested in trying uh, any of these methods, then please feel free to share. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Marker. All right, we gotta get that thing out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs>